Hello there guys, welcome to the channel, Talking with Jay Springer, I'm your host Jay, giving you a video on the channel today. Hello guys and welcome to today's review for the Journey to X-Men Dark Phoenix YouTube series, and on today's review I'm going to be talking about Deadpool 2. Let's get straight into it. Deadpool 2, this is directed by David Leach, who also directed John Wick 1, Atomic Blonde, and the new Hobson Shaw movie. This is an action-adventure comedy movie around two hours long and was released on the 16th of May 2018. Wade Wilson, aka Deadpool, brings together a team called X-Force to protect a young boy with abilities from the man himself named Cable. On to the good points. Now, the good points about this movie is the movie continues from Deadpool 1 with the hilarious humour throughout the movie, referencing other other franchises, other movies, the sarcastic jokes, the offensive jokes, this does everything absolutely awesomely. The action scenes throughout the movie were great and entertaining, whether it was the camera work, whether it was the editing with slow motion scenes, I felt it done a great job with that. This script and the dialogue deserves a lot of credit with the humour side of things, I felt it was very well written. I love the fact that the movie experiments with the character of Wade more than Deadpool in the movie. I felt he was more relatable, more connecting with that character. I felt he was more human-like and I felt that a lot more people would enjoy seeing the side of Wade, the emotional side of him struggling and the character arc and the growth of this character. The scene of X-Force landing from the plane was absolutely hilarious. One of the most iconic scenes and unexpected scenes in comic book and basically superhero history. I really enjoyed this scene massively. The death of Vanessa was brilliantly done with all the memories and all the things inside Wade Wilson's head. I thought they'd done a great job with that and really quite emotional for that character because she was one of the crucial characters from number one. The post credit scene was absolutely hilarious. Alongside that, we have the scene of Wolverine going against Weapon X in X-Men Origins, and Deadpool comes into that. That scene was absolutely hilarious as well. Colossus in this movie was quite cool as well. Alongside him, we have Dopinder, the taxi man. I felt he was much more funny in this movie, much more in it. I just love the fact that he's human, and that's why he couldn't be in Team X-Force. And th they also hired a person that's human-like with no powers. I thought it was hilarious, he was so angry, the way his character come through on this movie was so much more better. Domino was a great addition to this movie with her characters, which is quite unique with the power of luck. And I like the way they showed the power of luck. It was sort of like some Final Destination stuff. Everything going on around her and she's getting so lucky to not be caught in it. Juggernaut was introduced perfectly in this movie, better than X-Men The Last Stand, of course. He was more of a threat, he was actually fitted quite well into the story and the action as well, and I felt he'd done a good job. Ryan Reynolds as Wade and Deadpool. This man lives and breathes the character perfectly. No one else should replace him, no one else should play this character. He is Wade and Deadpool. I absolutely love him in this movie. He smashes it yet again, and this is a different approach to this character as well. It just goes to show that he's willing to do anything, especially especially for this franchise. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the next movie of what they do with this character as well. Is it going to be more human-like like this one? Is it going to be more Deadpool? What are they going to do with the next movie? But I think that this guy, Ryan Reynolds, is de definitely showing his class as an actor with this character, especially now receiving the role of Detective Pikachu. He's starting to get out there a lot more, and rightfully so. Josh Brolin as Cable was phenomenal. A proper good addition to this movie. Probably... Even going against Ryan Reynolds, I'd probably say I preferred Brolin in this in this movie as Cable. I think he was badass throughout the action scenes. He was fitting into the story perfectly. You could understand his side of the things. The way they used the character was great. I just wish they would have used him a little bit more just because I loved him. But then again, it is a Deadpool movie. If you use more of him, then it's more of a Cable movie. So I understand. And the last good point is Julian Dennison as Fire Fist. A young kid with mutant powers struggling through his life and you don't know whether he's on the good and the bad sometimes he changes his mind a bit too much for me as a kid but then a kid going through all that trauma and drama you can understand why he's like that and i found him very relatable he was quite a good presence on the screen with these other two great actors i feel like his character as well was built very well and had a lot to add to this movie on to some of the bad points about this movie, and the first bad point is some of the people from the first movie were barely in the movie or barely used right in this movie, and the, the one that really comes to mind for me was Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Now, she wasn't in the first movie a lot, but she was used a lot better in the first movie, 
and I was expecting to see her a lot more in this movie, and it really gutted me that she wasn't in this movie. Now, the most, the majority of the scenes she was in, it was either her teasing Wade, uh, or her and Yukio, her partner, and it, it just didn't really resurrect with me. I wanted to see more of her powers and more her being involved in the story. Some of the CGI in this movie needed work. It just felt like the budget for this movie isn't massive that we know, um, but what they did in this movie, they just seemed to like over try, and I felt that like the effects and the CGI was affected by that. The story for me was very overcrowded. It seemed like this movie really tried to achieve either as much or much more than number one Deadpool movie, and I felt like it was more like a Terminator movie as well with the storyline, the kid, and obviously someone trying to get to the kid, and they're trying to protect it. It just felt very Terminator-ish, and I felt like the story could have been a lot better and less, more polished in a way. So guys, it's rating time. Let's have a look at what the critics had to rate this movie. We have Rotten Tomatoes giving it a 83%, IMDb giving it a 7.8 out of 10, and Metacritic giving it a 66. My rating for this movie is a 7 out of 10. That makes this a hey, good movie. That's pretty good. Now guys, the purpose of this movie is to be a superhero movie that makes you laugh. Did it make me laugh? Hell yeah, it did. It was a fun and entertaining time. I just felt like if it was a bit more compact and polished, it would be a much better movie and even contend with the first movie. I just felt like it has some good and bad points to the movie. More good than bad, though. So I feel, still think that it's a good, enjoyable watch. And if you haven't watched it yet, you'd be crazy because Deadpool and his movies are just hilarious and a must-watch. So guys, a 7 out of 10 from me for Deadpool 2. Don't forget to leave your ratings and thoughts on the movie in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this video, simply smash that thumbs up. Let me know you enjoyed the journey alongside with me. And subscribe and hit that bell for much, much more. You ain't going to want to miss the stuff coming up on the channel as well as the stuff already on the channel. And don't worry guys, if you've missed the journey to X-Men Dark Phoenix so far, there'll be a link in the description for the playlist and an annotation at the end of the video and a card above my head. It'll take you straight through the playlist from X-Men 1 up until this point as well as the future stuff going in there where we're going to be reviewing X-Men Dark Phoenix and tomorrow. Tomorrow's video guys, I'm going to do a special video leading up to X-Men Dark Phoenix, probably like predictions towards what I think is going to happen and stuff like that, so look forward to that video. So without further ado guys, I've been me, you've been you, and I'll see you next time on Talking with Jay Springett.